Carolyn Smith is coming up from Chattanooga to speak. She's an awesome little girl, hot on fire for the Lord. I think I know a little bit about her. She's my baby sister, and she is anointed. The power of the Lord works through her. And, I mean, she is here coming, and she's already told me she has got a word from the Lord for the women of our church. So you need to be here, women. Ladies, men, you can sneak in, but you got to stand at the back and barely speak a word. This is not your conference. Next Monday, for all ordained, licensed, exhorted, any of you that are credentialed with the Church of God, next Monday night and Tuesday will be the ministers, the biannual. Two, every two years, we have a ministers meeting. We're encouraging all of our ministers to be there. If you are a licensed, credentialed minister in the Church of God, please plan on being at Columbus, Potter's House Church, on Monday and Tuesday. Okay, with that said, we're going to pray for Lita Boothby's family, for her, for her Robert. She lost her mother over the weekend. Please don't forget to pray for them. And Brother James Jackson also passed away yesterday. And we want to remember his wife, Naomi, who needs prayer this evening. And we'll pray as we pray over the word for them. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6. For the chief musician, a psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. Now, I want you to listen to the word of God as if it's just being spoken from the Lord directly into your heart, into your life. Listen to this. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. And there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. And jump down to verse 23. It says, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me, know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And then if, you don't have to turn there, but if you'll listen to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. It says, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, from God's sight. But all things are exposed or naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Father, on this Sunday night, we come to you and we thank you. Lord, I know folks have been going all day long. They, many of them were in two services this morning, and this is being our third service, and some are tired, and some are weary. Some have got problems and concerns. They've got anguish and anxiety in their hearts and minds. I just pray against all those things that would keep us from receiving from your precious word this evening touch us on this Sunday night. We've come together in your house and we know that you are an awesome, mighty God. And you're able to penetrate through every hindrance, every obstacle, any circumstance that would stand in the way of us receiving from your hand tonight. So I pray for freedom in this place because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We honor you and we bless your name this evening. In Jesus, your name we pray. We pray for Lita pray for the Jackson family, lift them up to you, praying for your strength and your peace, your presence to be with them, and Lord, for you to do a great and mighty work in their lives the next several days of peace that they can't even comprehend, joy that comes from nowhere, and remembering and treasuring the, the thoughts of their loved ones, and God, the confidence of knowing these two folks we know stand in the presence of the Lord this evening be with the families in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. There's a song by Casting Crowns. It says, it's a slow fade when you give yourself away. It's a slow fade when black and white turn to gray. And thoughts invade. Choices are made. A price will be paid when you give yourself away. And then it goes on. It says, people never crumble in a day. It's a slow fade. It's a slow fade. Have you ever felt like you were drifting away from God? 
maybe just stagnant, feeling like maybe you lack the, the power of God at work in your life. You feel like sometimes prayers are seemingly just, they just kind of hit the ceiling a little bit and fall right back down on the floor where you're at. Have you ever felt like something was missing in your relationship with God? Perhaps even tonight you might feel like you have somehow disconnected from everything you know about your relationship with the Lord. I've had that that thought and that heart that, that down in my heart as I prepared for this evening service. And I remember back in the day when I was a young a college student, I had a 1981 silver Mustang, and I loved it, took it to Lee, drove it down a Coe Street, you know, with the window down, and I'm like, I'm driving a Tang. Are you kidding me? Horsepower. I got the thing. I loved that little car. It was a stick shift, and I loved that even better because I would just, like, grind that thing going down. through. I loved my stick shift. But one thing I remember about, I worked at Peyton Southeastern Industries there in Cleveland for two years, and my first year, my second year, and as I was there one night, I was getting off work, and I went out to the car, and I went to turn it on, and it was dead as 4 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, oh, no. But then I remembered, well, you know, I've got a stick shift. Something's dead, probably the battery or something like that, the alternator, something's not right. So I just asked a couple of the guys that got off work as well. I asked them if they wouldn't help to, if they wouldn't care to help me push my car, and I'll pop the clutch. You know how that works. And it started right up, and sure enough, it did. And I was, all, it was awesome. I got back on the road, and I'm just like, Phew, that was taken care of. And I get down the road. I go down to Food Town there in, in Cleveland, and I'm trying to get me some stuff at Central Park. I'm getting me a hamburger, and I'm going through that. And I stop. I get some pop, and I get out of the car, turn the car off, go into the store, come back out, put the key in the ignition, and you guessed it, zero. And there I am. Nobody else is around. Nobody I know. Nobody I can say, hey, guys, help me, nothing like that. So... I get in the car, I push it, and I start running with it, and then I jumped in the car, popped the clutch. First time it didn't work, got out, pushed it, did it again, and the second time it worked, and I was back in business. And I, th when I got to the campus, I was like, I'm not going to be dumb. Are you kidding me? I'm going to park on a hill. So I parked my car up on a hill so that in the morning, next time I had to drive the car to work, I would just get in the car, let it roll a little bit down that hill, Right there on Church Street, down by Church Street, and I thought, it'll be perfect, it'll be beautiful, I'll roll it on down this little street, and I'll be able to start it. It started right up. I did that the first day, got all the way through, went to work, made sure I parked in a place where I could roll it easy, and start. And I'm sitting there, and I'm driving home, thinking, feeling pretty good about how I figured out that I don't even need a battery, <laughs> And it dawned on me that I could continue to keep pushing that car or I could just figure out what was wrong and fix it so that I could start it like a normal person. But I, I, had, it, I had it in my mindset that this was where I was and this is what was happening. And it wasn't until I tried to figure out what exactly the problem was. I got inside of it and a guy named Jim Reynolds there in Cleveland helped me to figure it out and I found, I went and he, he said, man, your, your battery cables are corroded, man. You got to clean those off. So I cleaned them off and took some little sandpaper and cleaned them real nice and got them back to being silver, put them on that thing and electric sparked off the battery. I went and started the car and there it was, all fixed. Everything was great and wonderful and I learned a powerful lesson. You got, your battery's got to be connected. You know, the connection wires, there's those battery cables. Those cables got to be connected to the battery. Got to be connected to the energy source. Got to be connected to the power source, right? You getting it? Sometimes our spiritual lives can be just like that. We can get so busy, so full of activity, so much going on in our lives that we get to the place where we don't even realize our battery cables, our connection to heaven, our connection to God, our relationship with Him can get corroded and can get messed up by the things in this world that hold us down and keep us cold and indifferent until finally we don't even realize what has happened and the connection we have with God and the power source of our soul is completely completely dissolved it's a slow fade it doesn't happen overnight sometimes it just happens we somewhere along the way we lose our connection lots of people do it you think that maybe it's just you and and, and maybe you've gone through this and you're thinking well the, that doesn't happen to the pastor or that doesn't happen to ministers it doesn't happen to all the godly good people that have seemingly walk around singing hymns all day long but let me tell you something it happens to everybody 
It will happen to everyone who allows themselves to get in this place where the connection to God can get broken or can get to the place where it's just corroded with the stuff around you, the stuff that's in the world. We get to the place where we get our, our connection with God is so loose that, man, we run around looking for words from everybody else, from every TV preacher and from every book we've ever read and from every video series. And we, we go on all, all kinds of adventures trying to find somebody to give us a word. And we get one for today, but we need one for tomorrow. Why? Because we haven't connected into the power source for ourselves. We've gotten to the place where we've become dependent on other people to give us a push. Other people to give us a push, a, a good song. Thank you, young people. Great song. That gave me a push. We come to church and we expect a little dabble, do you? We're expecting that you know, I'll get a little, little charge. I'll get a little push. If somebody will just give me a good push into the altar, if somebody will give me a little push with an encouraging word. If somebody will just give me a word from God, then I'll be able to go on another day and I'll park myself on a hill tomorrow and wait for another day and another 15 minutes when somebody else can give me another word. Let me tell you, God wants us to know he is in the business of wanting us to have a connection with him for ourselves. He wants us to have that connection for ourselves. It's really a problem in church, you see, because in church circles and Christian circles, Trent, it's, it's something weird that happens here because here everybody walks around like they're in this glory cloud all the time. Everybody's so perfect all the time. Everybody's so holy and righteous and nobody ever goes through a bad day or has a connection problem. No, not here. And if you do, you don't tell anybody about it. We're ashamed. We're ashamed of that. And we don't let anybody else know we got a problem. We just kind of look around at everybody else who's got a problem while we're hiding our problem, while we're ignoring our problem disconnect when we're hoping nobody notices and then suddenly the enemy gets involved and he starts to work on you until you finally get to this place where you he starts telling you stuff like you're never going to make the connection maybe you never even had one in the first place maybe it was all just a, a facade maybe it was just a, a fantasy maybe you got caught up in emotion maybe this thing isn't real let me tell you something tonight you need one more time to get connected to the power source of God so your fresh wonderful spirit can be touched to fresh and brand new by God because I'm here to tell you the fire that Jesus talked about in baptism with the Holy Spirit that is just as real in this moment tonight as it ever has been in the history of all of history. I'm telling you, he wants to touch us and minister in our lives and make us effective and influential. I don't want to walk into my workplace on Monday morning and I don't want to work in my own wisdom and my own strength and I don't want to work in my own power. I want to work under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I want my influence to be from heaven. I want the Holy Spirit to be able to give me a word for someone. I want the Holy Spirit to be able to use me to be a power source and a powerhouse for the work that he's doing in the kingdom in this day and time. Can I tell you, the enemy will tell you that you can never get that connection back. He'll try to tell you that you can never find God in that way ever again, that maybe you never had it, but if you did, you've lost it, and it's never coming back to you. But I'm here to tell you tonight, the devil is a liar. He is a liar. Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the Father God all in heaven together, are wanting you and I to have the connection that will bring fire and power and influence over your life. He wants you to have those things. So there's got to be a secret to reconnecting. Recon I've called tonight reconnecting because I think a lot more people than just me maybe a lot more people than just a couple get to the place where they can get cold and indifferent or seem to fade a little bit I've been there things get stressful things go go a little haywire and you get real busy and you get kind of the place where it seems like the connection is frayed and and, and you got to get to a place where you got to get alone and you got to get in the presence of the Lord and you got to reconnect. Am I the only one who ever has to reconnect? I'm going to be transparent and honest with you. I got to do it on a regular basis. I feel like I've got to continually do that. I think it even reflects what the Lord gave to us when the disciples asked him. He said they said Teach us how to pray. And he said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Give us our daily strength, our daily connection, Lord. Every day, man, we got to connect. Every day, you want to make influence on the people you love. You want your loved ones. You want the people you work with. You want to be a powerhouse for God wherever you go. I'm telling you, it's easy. If you'll connect your, your cables to the source, the power source of God, you're going to go around in a supernatural ability. That old Mustang would not move on its own. But once it was connected to power, it would go all over the place. And I'm telling you, that's where we're at. And we've got to understand that's what God wants for us. But God wants us to really connect. And here, here's what's important when we're talking about disconnect and when we're wanting to reconnect with God. First of all, don't listen to a word the enemy ever tries to tell you. He's the father of lies. He wants to do everything in his power to hold you down, get you looking at other people, causing you to look around at everybody else and their blessings and how God blesses them and God uses them. And he wants to just keep fading you into nothing until your pride and your jealousy and your, your all kinds of bitter feelings and unforgiveness starts to just cloud you until you are corroded to where there is not a connection left in your body for Jesus but if you will get a fresh, brand new look at what he has to offer, let me tell you, it doesn't matter how far disconnected you've gotten. It doesn't matter how far away you feel that you are. God is here tonight. He's able. He's strengthened. He's, got, he's a mighty, powerful, powerful God who is able to reach out to where you are and pull you in close to where he is. He wants to do that. God knows everything there is to know about you. And your driftwood experience is about to go down. Can I tell you that God is not shocked? I said this to someone in the altar tonight. God is not shocked by our lives. We need to know in reconnecting with God, we got to really know who God is. Sometimes I think, Brother Jones, we put God on a human level too often. The children of Israel did that in the wilderness when they waited and waited and waited on Moses to come down from the mountain after being with God. After a while, they didn't want that, that connection with, with the thunder and the lightning and the smoke. So they decided that they were going to make their own Jehovah. And they made it out of a golden calf. And they danced and worshipped around this God that they can control. You think that's preposterous. And I'm here to tell you tonight, there's a lot of Church of God people that are doing that in 2018, making God very manageable, making him very comfortable and very easy in your life. Let me tell you that Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. There's sacrifice in connecting with God. you got to know who God is and not be afraid of the fire and the thunder on the mountain got to not be afraid to get in close because there's nothing to be afraid of. Nobody should be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. No one should live their lives afraid of what it is to get too close to God. I've seen people who won't go near an altar. Their fear, the fear that some preacher is going to lay hands on them. You know, it's never, first of all, been about a preacher. Preachers come and go. They blow and go. And they're, no, they're nothing. They're nothing. Even the best of the best of the best still have a funeral one day. They're just people. But you and I need to understand the power source that is behind that anointing. That's what we want. And that we shouldn't be afraid of. God's not shocked about you. He's not shocked as to where you are. He knows all about you. That scripture I read in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. There's nothing he doesn't know about you and me. There's nothing he doesn't know. He knows more about you than you know yourself. Nothing is hidden from him. He knows everything there is. He knows it all together. And guess what? He loves you anyhow. He called you anyhow. He's blessed your life and helped you in all the years that you've been wandering this journey. He's loved you anyhow. He knew everything there was to know about you. The deepest thoughts of your life, the patterns of your life, the things you thought were secret and hidden. He knows it all. Nothing is hidden from the Lord. All things are naked and exposed in front of him. And he loves you anyhow. That's the deep, unconditional, true love of God. He knows everything about us. And he wants us to know him. 
Because if we will know him tonight, if we'll have an idea who he really is and not relegate him to human terms, not make him a golden calf, not make him something we can manage, not make him a cute little religion with a cute little band and a cute little preacher up here just giving a cute little message on Sunday. If we'll take what he wants to do in our lives and make it the powerhouse he wants it to be, then you and I are going to experience something that will turn that, old, that Brownsville revival we talked about this morning, Brother Ken. It will turn the Brownsville revival into a memory because of what God is doing in the present day. I believe the Lord wants another outpouring, don't you? I believe he wants another outpouring, another revival to touch young people, to touch the church, to make the church aware of who he is in these last days. And I know that God wants to do it, but we have got to know God. we got to really know him. It's not, well, God's the church of God. No, he's not. Well, God's Pentecostal. No, he's not. God is God. He's all-powerful and almighty, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. He's the almighty God. He's a powerful God. He's out and above all of life, out and above all of time. He is and was and is to come. He's beyond all of that. His knowledge is infinite. There's no way for you and I to ever tap in to what God knows. It, it isn't up to us to ever really, honestly, let's just get brass tacks. It's not even really up to us to question God. Because God don't need our questions. We need our questions answered. But God, we don't need to let God. Heard a preacher say, and you've heard me say this before. I'll just say it again for somebody who hadn't heard it. Heard a preacher on TV one time, and he said, Now, God, I'm a holding you to your word. And I was like, I'm watching the TV, and he says, Now, Je now Jesus, I'm not talking to you right now. He said, I'm talking to the Father. He said, Father, I'm holding you to your word. I stood back from the TV screen thinking lightning was going to come through my house. Like we ever have to question God and call him down as if he needs to understand his words. We don't know God. We don't really know who he is. He said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. His word don't come back void. It don't come back empty. It don't come back with no power. He speaks and, he, and things begin to come to pass. He spoke creation into existence. And the scientists tell me that even tonight, creation is still being created. You know why? When God speaks life, he keeps speaking. It, it never stops. It doesn't quit. It doesn't come back void. His word will always go forth in power. And the night he saved my soul, filled me with the Holy Ghost from that night to this I am moving forward in the creative power of Almighty God and I want to live my life in such a way that's why I get excited that's why I'm so so energetic up here because I just think sometimes we need we need shaken I need shaken we need to reconnect we need to understand God is not some cute little boxed up religion sitting on excuse me sitting on a shelf He's not just some cute little thing you got on the side over here that will help you when you die for a good funeral. I'm telling you, he wants you and I to experience him in our lives, every fiber of our being, the dreams that he has. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. What? He says, for I know. He knows. He knows right now what your future is. He knows right now what your past is. He knows right now where you're headed, what's happening down the road. And he's still working with you. He's still calling on you. He's still using you and anointing you and help, helping you along your way. God knows everything about you. He knows the good things about you. He knows the bad things about you. He knows all the things your wife don't know, all the things your husband don't know. He knows all the things your friends don't know and the church don't know. He knows all of that and he still chose to save you. He still chose to fill you with the Spirit. He still chose that He would use you in the kingdom. So you and I need to know who God is. He's a God who loves unconditionally. He's a God who loves past all the, the failures and the problems and the frustrations of our lives. He loves us enough. And if we'd ever get that kind of courage, that kind of confidence, we would turn this world upside down for Christ. If we ever had any idea who we really, really really, really was. If we knew him. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend, may be able to know 
with all the other saints, what is the width and length and depth and height? And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The knowledge of God is massive. The knowledge of God is so huge, it's so big. He knows so much. You don't have to fret and worry. You don't have to have the feelings of, of doubt and discouragement in your life. You don't have to. You, you, we do. We, we're so human. But it's time to reconnect, to get the battery cables cleaned off and sand off all that corrosion and all that stuff from all the doubt and discouragement the enemy's thrown at you. It's time to remove all that and get back to a place where you've got stainless steel cable connection with God. And the power of the Holy Spirit is at work in your life to answer every question, to answer every problem to help you to walk in the strength and power that he has given to the church in these last days we ought to know he said in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters will prophesy we've got to have more daughters rising up and prophesying we've got to have more young men and old men dreaming dreams and having visions we've got to see the spiritual renewal of the church in these last hours because the harvest is ready people are dying on the streets they're being kidnapped and sex trafficking and drug trafficking. They're being ki killed left and right. We know this world is in a wicked place. A police officer can't even pull somebody over on the side of the road anymore without worrying if he'll ever get home to his children at night. I'm telling you, we're living in an evil and a wicked day in an hour and time when people are filled with hate and rage. It's time that the love of God permeate into the streets the highways and the byways and bring a sense of a sense of redemption to the hearts and lives and hope hope for the hopeless and the hurting they need to know there's an answer. They've sat looking at the church for long enough, sitting up on the hill, afraid to let anybody sit in their pews, afraid to let anybody come in their service, afraid to let anybody come in that's a little different. We look at people and we're like, well, we'll let you in as long as you just kind of fix yourself up. I can't hang with you. I can't be around you. You're in trouble. You've got a bad reputation. You've got bad things going on in your life. So when you get your act together, then you can come and hang out with me. That is not the church that Jesus called onto the right. That is not the church he designed in the New Testament. That is not the church that Jesus wants to anoint and put a fire in in these last days. He wants you and I to get to the place where we'll say, come, all those that are hurting, all those that are bruised, battered, and beaten, all of those who are addicted to drugs and into all the evil that's in this world. He wants us to get to the place where we will say, Lord, if you can use anything, use me. Take my hands, take my feet, all of me, every bit of me. I don't want to be a spiritual snob. I don't want to be somebody who can't relate to people who, who have been hurting. In the, the scripture that said, such were some of you. But you have been washed and you've been cleansed. Oh, we've got to have a heart again. The way that we got to love the things that God loves. I was so moved this morning by the message. I was so moved by uh, the Kufi, the Christians United for Israel this morning, the service that we had when that little gentleman got up there. I saw him in my mind's eye as a 15-year-old boy. I saw him walking with those in that concentration camp. I saw him marching along with all those folks in the Nazi Germany soldiers that were after them. And I, I saw a 15-year-old boy who saw his aunt and his cousins and his uncles and all of them people be killed. I, I watched as his grand, or in my mind, as his, he talked about his grandparents being killed. I, I watched as I thought, man, I don't, can't even relate to what it would have been like down to 80 some pounds as a kid trying to survive, trying to live through that horrible attack, that horrible that horrible situation where there was such evil, rampant evil that was out to kill, to steal and destroy. And then it just dawns on me. We have 15-year-olds in our sanctuary that go out on that march every day when they leave their houses. They're out in the city streets and they're out there fighting, trying to survive. And they, are, they have no hope if we don't have an answer in the church. They have no hope if we don't show them that there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus Christ to absolutely bring redemption redemption to them, to their hearts and to their heart lives. we got to be the ones that go to the fire. We don't stand outside the fire and say, come on, there's safety out here. No, we need somebody who will get bold enough, who will be like the Hebrew boys and say, I'll go in the fire and I'll pull 
out those that are hurt and those that are bruised and battered. We've got to have more people willing to run into the fire instead of standing on the outside like a spiritual pious hypocrite and not allowing the Spirit of God to use them to go into the dark trenches of the world. If you believe that, say amen. Just a little bit fired up, sorry. If we only knew God. Thank you. I see you are a man of God. Look at you. Thank you, Lord. If we only knew God for who he really is. God knows he knows himself. We don't sometimes know ourselves. We don't know who we are. We have trouble sometimes. We surprise ourselves with things we thought we could do that we can't do. As I'm getting older, I'm finding that happens quite a bit. Knees don't do what they used to do. Thought I could run out to the mailbox the other day. Oh, Brian, Coach Brian's here. I got to not say this out loud. I thought I could run to the mailbox, and I got out and thought I'd sprint to the mailbox. Well, it felt like concrete was running to the, to the mailbox. I was tired as I could be by the time I got back to the house. Can't do some things I thought I could do. And then there have been some things that I didn't think I could do that, that I can do. I'm always surprising myself. But God knows that he is above and beneath and around and over. God knows he has no limit. There's no boundaries to his ability. God knows he looks at us and he says, don't you know who I am? Don't you realize that I am everything you need? I'm all things. You know, we get to hold on. We don't, we don't just keep, we, we can't keep it in this place. You got to realize that sometimes we look to God, we call out to God, but we just, we call and throw all this doubt and discouragement and all this Lack of faith up there. We throw fear up there. But I heard a song the other day. Fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. It doesn't speak truth. And we've got to get to the place where we know that we know that we know. I love Sister uh, Landris. She got up one Sunday morning at the old Harlem Park Church and had a beehive all the way to the ceiling. And she started testifying. And she said, I was happy this morning. The Lord woke me up. She goes, and I know that I know that I know. And I know that I know that I know he's my redeemer. And by the time she got on that 10th time, people started shouting all over the place. Why? It wasn't because of her words. It wasn't because she was saying something real poetic. It was because there was anointing and there was power behind what she was speaking. And people knew that was truth coming out of her, fire coming out of her spirit. Oh, if we could just get it tonight, I pray and hope that I'm anointed at least a little bit tonight to let you know there is fire in the power of Almighty God. There is power that will come down on the altars of this world just like it did on Mount Carmel to bring a complete healing and deliverance to the people who need the answers. I'm telling you, we need to know who he is. God knows all about himself. He knows what he can do, and he wants you and I to know what he can do. He knows all about his creation. He knows about everything he's ever made. Genesis 1 and 20, it says, Then God said, Let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. It says, So God created sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded, according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. He's seen it all. He's seen it. Mm. Should I speak to your circumstance this evening, says God, I am already in your deliverance. I stand at the finish line of your struggle. I am here waiting for your faith to see my eyes, for your arms to outstretch to my embrace. I am a God of great power and might. I wish you knew 
My heart is that you would know how powerful I am. That I am a God who can pull you out of the mire and the clay. I am a God who can pull you out of the fire. I can pull you out of the flood. It doesn't matter your circumstance. It doesn't matter whose fault it was. It doesn't matter any of those circumstances that you think are so suffocating in your life. Look to me tonight. Hold fast to my word and know that I, the Lord, your God, will deliver you. You must know that I am, I am. Hallelujah. Stand with me this evening. He knows all about you. He knows the past. He knows the present. He knows the future. He's already in it, as he said. You can be set free from things that hinder you. He knows all about you, every fault, every hang-up, every trouble, every trial. He knows everything about you. He looked at Adam and he said, Adam, where are you? As he walked in the garden. He wasn't saying that because he needed to know where Adam was hiding. He already knew. God doesn't want you and I to hide anymore. He doesn't want us to hide behind humanity. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Life was given and breathed into our spirits. We've given a soul. He created you after his own image. You belong to God. And God is mighty and powerful. He knows you're sitting down and you're rising up. He understands your thoughts so far off. He says, you comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. This thought is too high for me. I can't even attain it. It's too wonderful. Oh, if we only knew tonight what he wants for us. Adam, where are you? God wasn't needing information. He just wanted Adam to know where he was. He wants us to know where we are tonight. He speaks to you and he calls you by name. He says, where are you? Where are you? Are you in doubt and discouragement? Are you in weak and the connection bad? Are are you about ready to give up on the idea that God answers prayer because the connection is so bad? It's like a cell phone. You've walked to every corner of the house and you're trying to get a connection and just can't get a signal. So you've given up and you've thought, well, you know, Lord, you you can't. Apparently that's not the way it works. I've prayed. I've tried. I've sent the signal up. But the connection is just not making it. Oh, I'm telling you tonight, that's not his fault. It may not even be your fault. But it is something that's happened to disconnect And so it's time for you to remember who he is. You can trust in him. What was it Isaiah said? In the scripture he says, in Isaiah 50, he says, what do you do? I'll paraphrase. What do you do when you walk in in obedience and you're doing everything you know to do, but you're still walking in this black place and you don't see the answer? Isaiah said, I know. I will trust in his name. And I will lean on his reputation, on who he is. He's the God that created the sun, the moon, and the stars. He's a God who created the planets and the universe. He's a God who spoke all that into existence, and it's still being created. The universe is still expanding. Second by second, star by star, planet by planet, even as we speak from the last 6,000 years, the world is still expanding. God speaks into existence. He brought the birds into the air, and from all those thousands of years ago, there's still birds today, and they ain't a skinny one in a tree anywhere. He takes care of them. He spoke man into existence, formed him out of the clay. 
breathed life into him, took a rib out of him and made the woman. And there those two went on, be fruitful and multiply, he said. And to this day, they're still having babies to this very hour. Because God is a creative God who just keeps creating everything he speaks. And can I say something? The night he saved you, the night he filled you with this Holy Ghost, he spoke life into you. And that life is bubbling up inside of you like a river they sang about a few minutes ago. That river is flowing out of you. And you stuck on the river bank, get off the river bank and get back into the river where you belong. Because it's in the river that you're made alive. It's in the river that the power of God is working. You're not asking God to get in on what you're doing standing outside here on the riverbank. No, you get in the river. Get in the water. Get in the power of God and let him anoint you with a creative fireful power. Power that will work in your life to create what you're supposed to be in your destiny. He says, for I know I know the plans that I have for you. He's got plans for you. You're barely tapped into it because you got so much doubt. You've barely tapped into it because you're trying to manage your golden calf. Let go and let God. Let God be who God is. Let his word teach you about who he is in power and might. Know him. See him for who he is. He knows all about creation. He knows all about you. He knows all about your frustrations. He knows all about your sins. Can I get an amen there? He knows all the failings. He knows all of the failures you've done, all the ways you've lived wrong. He knows all those things. He has seen all that, and he still saw fit to save you all those years ago. That blows my mind. And every failure and every shortcoming, and you sit here tonight and your connection is. And he says, I love you. Let's clean off those battery cables of your soul and let's get you back connected. He wants you to connect with him again. He wants the songs to minister to your spirit again. He wants the word to come alive when you open it up and you start reading and you can't hardly stand it because the tears begin to flow. The emotion is there. Some cry, some don't. I'm not saying that has to be that way. I'm just saying you need to connect again. However it is you connect, when the power of God leads you to pray for a perfect stranger, when the power of God leads you to speak life into someone else's life, don't be the one that's got to always run and find a word. Be the one who's carrying the word inside of you. Be the one that's full of the power of Almighty God. Let the glory of God fill the temple once again in your life. The connection of the power of God. And don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. The Lord is getting ready to come. That trumpet, I, I love that shofar. I'd love to have that blown at every service. I think I'd fall out on the floor if I heard it right now. Because I'm believing that that's, that's the sound. And he played it so beautifully this morning. I thought, Lord, that's better than anyone else. Ever. No offense, Gary, but last time you played it, it I was like, oh, is that what he's really going to do? Is that what Gabriel's going to do? I think he should get a real trumpet. I'm just playing with but when I heard that this morning, man, that was beautiful. And I thought, I, I want to hear that. And we're going to hear that. Any minute. Any minute, we're there. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of it. You have sons, you have daughters that still need saved. Come down to the altar in boldness tonight. You have grandbabies that need saved? Come in boldness. There ain't no devil in hell can hold them captive and hostage. Not one more day. And the, when the child of God will say, my God is able. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You call them saved. You call them sanctified. You call them filled with the Holy Ghost. You call the enemy into, into order. And you put a blue, a, a, a restraining order against that enemy that says he can't touch your family. Can't touch your situation. Can't touch your ministry any longer. Can't mess with your your mind any longer. Don't let the enemy have one more night, not one more day. It's time to arrest the powers of the enemy. You need financial help? Then you say, there's no lack in the kingdom of God. Our Father owns the cattle of a thousand hills, and I'll not suffer financially, not one more day. I'm seeking the power source, the power of God. I am living every day to believe God for healing, for deliverance, for provision, for ministry, for calling it for His guidance. 
every day. Ordered steps. How many believe they have ordered steps if they belong to God? Ordered steps. So I'm asking you tonight, I'm asking, I'm just going to ask everyone who will, just get out, come meet me in the altar. We're going to pray together tonight. If you're believing for the power, if you're believing for the reconnection, if you're believing God to touch your life, you need to be more influential on your job. You need to be more of a powerhouse for God. Wherever you go, you need to be, you, you are working and you're doing great, but God has so much more for you. Let him touch your life. Let him minister through you tonight in a greater way than you ever dreamed was possible. I believe he wants to turn you upside down. I know he wants to turn me upside down. I know that's what I'm seeking. In the name of Jesus, come in real close, real close. Would you right where you are, just in your own way, whether it's with your hands or with your heart, just close your eyes and look up to the Lord and begin to say, Lord, reconnect me. Lord, I want that connection. I want that, that power of work in my life again. I don't want to have to be pushed any longer. I don't want to have to be prodded any longer. I don't want to have to be supercharged by a song here and a word there and, and a service here and there. I want the power of God to go with me that even if I'm in the darkest alley and the gutters of this world, I'll still know that there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to be a powerhouse, Lord, wherever I go. I want to be light in the middle of darkness. I want to be salt that brings flavor and that brings a, a sense of strength and life to this world that is dying for an answer, starving and thirsting for you, the water of life. I want to be that answer to the problem of society. I want to be the answer to the problem in this world. I no longer want to sit back and beg for people to come to my, my ministry and to my church and to my house. I, I want them to know that there's power, Lord. I'm running to them. I'm going to give them the answers to life. I'm going to bring that life that's been so good to me. I'm going to bring that life to the darkness around me. Everywhere that I go, every conversation that I have, every heart that is hurting, uh, we are the balm in Gilead for them. We are the healing balm of Gilead. We are the words of life. As the Lord fills the temple of our hearts, we are the answer for the world because Jesus is that strength and answer in us. In Jesus, we ask you tonight, touch your people. Won't you lift your hands right now and let the Holy Ghost anoint you. Let him touch you fresh and brand new this evening. Let go of everything that hinders. Don't let anything begin to, to corrode away at your connection with God. No matter what it is, let it go. Let it go. Let the power of God refresh you and recharge you, energize you this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ, we honor you, Lord, and we come knowing that you're able, Lord. This is what you want. It's your desire for us, God, that we'll be light, that we'll be salt, that we'll be influence, that we'll be power. Lord, that we'll be the fire this world needs to see. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, touch your people. Minister to your people tonight. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're down in this altar, let me tell you something, what I feel in my heart. If you will trust the work of God in your life tonight, if you will trust him to empower you tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're going to sing.